So I have these audio amplifier ICs, probably surround sound, or at least, yeah, maybe multi-channel. So who wants to see a project started where I take a look at these, see which ones are working, and, and look at the data sheets and um, build circuits around them? That's one of the ideas that I've got for videos for the future. So, um, but we also have the, um, the drone. So remember, the, the drone had, um, was using pulse width modulation um, f for communicating commands to the, um, to the board, but it also supports pulse position modulation. And I had to order this little um, adapter. So another, and then I haven't installed um, drone in on the, uh, the laptop and there's going through all of that. And then there's calibrating the drone and then seeing if drone in can do the um, uh, auto leveling or sorry, um, auto tune, auto tune um, on the drone, you know, toss it in the air and drone, drone in will through communications with the, the receiver be able to um, auto configure the PID settings. So the um, proportional integral derivative uh, parameters that go into how you do um, feedback into the motors from position sensors in nine axes or how you um, yeah how, how you update that based on the input from the from the sensors given things that you know about the geometry of the aircraft so that the, the, the sensors can be configured ahead of time with with geometry settings. So you know the physics involved, all of the various parameters that go into acceleration, deceleration, because propeller spinnings, they uh, they give you a, uh, um, a, a, a sense of the RPM and you can f figure that out through feedback in the uh, PID sensors, etc. And so same sort of thing with um, moving up and down due to wind currents. You can start to compensate for those because you have um, an elevation that is independent of your acceleration, and that's the GPS coordinates. So you set, you fuse all of those different um, components into one. So anyway, <laughs> maybe that's a bit of a tangent. Um, that's another idea for a video or video series, probably. Or like, I'll end up doing it, but it's just when. When am I going to get around to it? And then there's the uh, <laughs> portal sentry robot, because that thing, I'm also, I've got a, a couple other ideas that I, I want to try out. So um, again, inertial measurement units. So this is a nine axis. What is this? This is the, the MPU 9250. So um, yeah, that's, I, pretty sure that it is a at least a six axis or a nine axis um, uh, inertial measurement unit and so you could use it to um, to trigger um, events so as somebody walks near the robot it could wake up it could go ch and then say something it's a wake-up call and then the other thing that I was thinking of is is working on different ways that it scans its environment so when it wakes up it's kind of sluggish but if it's been um, awake for a while it kind of moves faster so in in order to do that I have to implement some sort of an algorithm that will um, change the velocity of the updates as it moves from position to position and instead of scanning horizontally like a, a TV raster I would um, implement a some sort of a randomization of where the uh, the robot moves to um, and then also maybe some sort of a pointer <laughs> so that you could start to do something like either uh, you know tag a chest with a laser pointer or shoot a nerf dart at somebody <laughs> if they try and enter your cubicle so uh, that's another it's another collection of um, project ideas that I could pursue, and I, I just I don't know what to do next. And in a totally different direction. I need to do something with, with this this winter. This is a, um, a telescope objective. And uh, I've got one. 
a friend of mine has a couple like this in a different focal length and we want to build re refractors with them so <clears throat> or re yeah <laughs> and that would be in a completely different direction and then there's a whole bunch of projects on that side that I want to accomplish as well because there's a, a I'm rebuilding a 10 inch Dobsonian um, a Mead Starfinder that I picked up and it has a great mirror but the the optical tube assembly is terribly designed the mirror is glued onto a, a solid piece of um, particle board so it doesn't cool you can't get air past the mirror very well that particle board acts as an insulator so it doesn't cool the mirror very well so I need to take the mirror off of that and I'm building a a truss tube um, mount for it and then there's also working on this guy that needs needs some doing I want to um, I want to put um, instead of wood in the end trusses of those tubes some sort of um, thermoplastic much like that but um, so that the expansion of the wood doesn't depend or the expansion of this joining mechanism doesn't depend on humidity um yeah so that's another project that needs to be looked at and then there's this kiln that should get turned into a uh, a reflow oven of some sort i think um so that would be mounting some sort of a servo mechanism to control the opening and closing of this um, replacing the thermocouple or finding a place to drill a thermocouple through the um the body of this into here so into the into the inside here so that we can actually measure the temperature properly and then <clears throat> if that isn't what we're going to use for a reflow oven then there's this guy that could get turned into a reflow oven as well but in order to turn that into a proper reflow oven i'd have to do a lot of re-insulation and things like that so this is probably lower on the list of devices to convert into a reflow oven compared to the other one but anyways there's those that as a, a category of project as well and then there's the uh, plasma tv teardown and repair of the uh well it's probably a broken power supply but you know uh, hmm. I'm not super excited about that one. So I have a bunch of these NeoPixels that I can be using to uh, to do projects with. Just have to um, basically solder solder them in sequence. So you use like some magnet wire, and they would be fairly inobtrusive in behind some sort of um, translucent material. <clears throat> there, there's nothing that you can inherently sew these onto with, but what you could do is you could um, um, solder a uh, a loop that you could put conductive thread between as well. But um, the other thing you can do is you could just use hot glue to um, temporarily affix them to a, ma a material. So, yeah. As long as that piece of the material was protected from spills and things like that, you would be able to not have to launder it and you could... Yeah. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. What I'm trying to get at is a way of mapping an IMU. So in any event, you've got at least six axes uh, and you can tell which direction it's moving and you can tell whether it's accelerating or decelerating. So there's those two um, components that you can um, access, uh, access. You can access basically the position over time or you can access how fast it's it's increasing um, its velocity in a at a particular moment the acceleration so um, those two things could be used as a mapping between um, between those two axes and um, axes on a plane so you could based on the uh, the motion that your IMU is delivering you could tell whether how fast um, a simulated chain should wiggle according to how fast you're moving the top of the chain because as you're 
if you've played with a slinky, you know that as you swing the slinky up and down, a wave travels down the slinky. And that's the same thing that happens in a, in a pond, too. You throw a, a pebble into the pond, and it produces a set of waves that that radiate um, outward from where that uh, disturbance in the top of the pond was. Same sort of thing. you got a disturbance at one end of the slinky, and the slinky goes has waves going out of it. So anyways, what you could do is you could, I mean, if you've got like um, a pattern of alternating colors or you've got like a background color, let's say, and then you've got your line color um, and you could graph, in essence, the wave as it travels through this uh, display in time. And you can also um, do something, things like um, adjust the velocity of the wave through Consider this a medium, like um, if it's in air or if it's in glass or if it's in water, it has a different velocity, so it'll it'll move faster or slower, relatively speaking. So you can really play with that parameter. So like maybe instead of it being, um, you know, the the velocity of the of the wave is, is quite um, quite high, but you can map it to a reasonably visible um, speed through some incredibly dense material effectively. So that, that would be an equation that would re relate the velocity of your, um, the relative velocity of your input, the thing that's adjusting the sine wave. And then as time goes down, you calculate a position for each of those um, rows, and that produces your wave as it goes down, um, your array of uh, LEDs. And, and that's just the position of one parameter of those, either brightness or color. So you could also have a mapping of color that um, takes over that. So I, I don't know, you, you might have a, <laughs> a sensing a, a volume. And so the higher the volume, the farther towards the red, the, the whole color palette goes or something like that. Like, I mean, there's so much that you can do for mapping these um, various uh, different um, inputs into output. So a visual output is what we're thinking, right? So um, velocity, acceleration, direction, um, intensity of some other parameter like sound, it all could get mapped onto um, a, an array of LEDs to express the effects in one domain, position, volume, in another domain, visual domain. So that you, what you're looking at is a representation of what is happening positionally, or perhaps even in the, in the oral space. So with volume. Yeah. That's another project that maybe I want to tackle.